day before I'd had a grand hike in the Northwest Highlands and following this I got in the car and drove down to what's believed to be one of Scotland's most beautiful and scenic glens where I was to spend the night so I could gallop early for a long hike the following day. Oh, I've just woken up, well, I said I was woken up, woke up about 10 minutes ago and uh, well, it's freezing. Forget how cold it gets. <laughs> but to be honest with you, it doesn't get this cold in the car in the summer. It felt like a winter night. Which I should have expected after all the snow yesterday, so... I just turned the car on, I'm gonna let it heat up a bit, heat myself up a bit, and uh, then... Brave opening the doors, <laughs> get a coffee on and get walking. As I said, it's still about an hour till sunrise, but uh, whether I get walking before sunrise or not, I think it's looking fairly... Yeah, looks uh, fair to middling, so... Anyway, right, let's warm up. And uh, get some coffee and see me. I got up and quickly had my breakfast, which I washed down with a nice cup of coffee. And I was soon on my way, just before sunrise, hiking along a nice Land Rover track that wound its way along the side of the loch and through the lovely Caledonian pine forest. It was a lovely morning. Well, what a stunning morning it is! And the sun's just crept up above the horizon there, I don't know if you can see it. It's just beautiful, it's very cold. <laughs> Probably colder than it has been a lot of the winter. But it's just lovely, you can see the, uh, the hills up there, Afric hills behind me there. They've got a wee dusting of snow and the, the, the sun's just starting to catch them. And Yeah, the walk that I've come through, I've just been following this uh, estate track. It would have been an ideal for a bike actually, in fact the last time I was on it, I was biking away up to the Albaith Bothy. Uh, I might have shaved half an hour off by taking this, but I'm going to be cutting up hills soon and uh, up onto the high tops. Now the cloud is moving fairly fast, so I think it will be windy up there. But at the moment I'm just enjoying this, I was going to say uh, still and peacefulness, but it's not really it's still, but I've been accompanied by the bird song. I don't know if you can hear it. I'm not sure if the microphone will pick that up, but... Yeah, it's been lovely coming along, the, the birds singing away this early in the morning, so yeah, I think we get cracked on. It's the route that I was taking soon took me off that lovely Land Rover track and onto, well, pretty pathless terrain and going through knee-deep heather through the forest, but yeah, it was, it was just lovely. This area of the ancient Caledonian pine forest is the third largest area in Scotland and uh, I must admit, on a morning like today, it was just stunning. Absolutely beautiful. Well, I've come off the uh, the main land Land Rover track and it's really quite pathless here. And I'm glad it's frozen because it would have been a right bog trot. But what a place, look at that behind me, I don't know if you'll make it out. But the mountains have all revealed themselves and they have got white coats in them today and the sun's coming up to the east and just illuminating them. Now, how, how long that snow stays there, I'm not sure. I'm just glad I got up early before it melts away. But it's beautiful, and these pine forests, this ancient Caledonian forest, just adds that little bit of extra to the uh, to the scenery. And although it's a bit of a it's a bit of a trudge through this bog, this is all making it worthwhile. It's absolutely beautiful, perfect. So um, I've, I've been taking loads of pictures and bits of video. I really need to get cracked on because it's a long <laughs> it's a long round, and I'm probably about three percent into what I need to do today. So I better shut up and get walking. But what a morning! Absolutely perfect. <laughs> and what a morning it certainly was. I couldn't help myself, so I stopped just to take it all in and got the camera out and captured some snaps of that lovely ancient forest with the white peaks behind.
time watching the sun rise in the sky and illuminating the mountains as it, as it did so. I took some pictures but I really needed to get cracked on so before long I was heading out of that lovely forest and onto the hillside with a nice layer of frost beneath my feet. That's me up on the open hillside now and I've left that beautiful, beautiful old Caledonian pine forest behind and what a joy it was walking through those those pieces of wood. There's not many of them left in Scotland and it does remind me a lot of uh, Rothy Murcus and uh, the Cairngorms, it's just the mountains are slightly different. And I think I've hit the jackpot today, look at that behind me, I don't know if you can make it out, but the Munros on the north side of Glen Africa are white with a fresh covering of snow and I'm just so glad that I got up early, as they say they the early bird catches the worm because it looks like the clouds starting to fill in from the north so I'm not sure how long these views will last for. I'm hoping I'm wrong and they last all day but anyway it's been worth it just for this alone, it's absolutely beautiful. So yeah now that I'm on the hillside it's a big long circuit round, two corbets before heading back down and I think that forest that I came through is very boggy. <laughs> You know, the, the, some of the descriptions, I think the Walk Islands descriptions say that uh, the path's, uh, yeah, it's faint, it was a faint path. I, 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 would, go back, I would go as far as saying as, uh, there's no path at all. <laughs> it was very, very, very faint and if you don't like heather bashing through long heather and uh, catching ticks and what have you, that's not for you. But it was worth it now that I'm up here, so I'm going to crack on and get up the hill. What a day. I was now ascending higher up onto the hillside, but those views just kept on getting better and better. And the hill walking was just fabulous. It was nice, short heather. And it was cold. It was certainly, yeah, a bit parky up there. And the snow showers were gathering to the north as I headed up onto the ridge and towards Corbett number one of the day. Well, I'm uh, high on the ridge now, and there's a fair bit of up and down to go. If I swing round, you'll see the first uh, corbett's just over here, and I swing right down and up, back up there, and then right round, you can't see, I'm going right round, and uh, in a big loop and coming back down. But the, the weather's changed, there's a few light showers coming in now, I, I think I was quite lucky getting that sunshine when I was coming through the uh, Afric forest. And it's just, it's quite atmospheric actually, the Monroes over here are catching a wee bit of light as the showers come in, they're disappearing and reappearing out of the cloud. The showers aren't too heavy, it's just, uh, it's kind of footery stuff. It's lovely, it's absolutely lovely. I was hiking at a fair old pace to try and keep warm, but eventually I succumbed to the cold and I had to stop and take that soft shell off. And I had my duvet jacket in the in the bag and popped that on and I even decided to put the hard shell on top of it because I was feeling the cold and although it was well into May, it was feeling like winter today. The snow was falling out of the skies and it wasn't uh, it wasn't melting away so it just shows you how cold it was. And as the morning progressed the clouds to the north seemed to get a bit thicker and the snow showers were certainly rolling in. But I wasn't too far away from the first summit of the day and I soon found myself approaching the cairn at the top of Corbett number one. Now here's the summit of the first Corbett of the day. Oh, it's taking a while to get here. It's now, oh, it's about 9 o'clock, 9.30. So that's taking me about three and a half to four hours. Albeit I have stopped to uh, to, to do some filming as I, as I do always. And what a lovely walk up this uh, this side of the, the loop follows the hills on the south side of Glen Affric. And Glen Affric's probably one of the lot. Well, I don't think it's the longest glen, I think that accolade goes to Glen Lyon, but it's certainly a very long glen and a lot of people rate it as the most beautiful glen in Scotland and I can understand why, especially on days like today. You can see right up and it, 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 if you follow it all the way up, it goes past, there's a, there's a famous a Bothy halfway and if you keep on going past the Bothy, it drops you out towards uh, Aylan Donald Castle and the top of Glen Shield and these sort of places, the road to Sky. In fact, I met a couple of women uh, in the car park last night who had gone and walked all the way through up to the Rattigan Youth Hostel and uh, had to drive all the way back for the car because they'd obviously left the car at either end and it had taken them a good two, two and a half hours drive. So, uh, respect to them. Anyway, the, the loop now can head south and I'm heading towards Glen Shiel now and I can see through the snow showers the mountains of Glen Shiel showing themselves. 
And it just, it's just kind of like a walk of two halves. You've got Glen Affric side and then down to these big massive giants of Glen Shiel. It's absolutely beautiful. And with a wee coating of snow, it's just made it extra special. I think I'm about halfway now. Well, just under halfway. And uh, there's a few more ups and downs to go. So I better stop talking and get walking. Right, on to the next one. Ah. So I left the summit and the cloud was down and the snow was still footering away and for the last kind of 45 minutes to an hour I'd been inside the cloud and it had been snowing and I was beginning to think these snow showers were merging into a longer spell and my chances of getting views were diminishing. However, within the space of a few minutes the snow shower seemed to blow away, blue skies appeared and I got some wonderful views. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> well, as I mentioned when I was on the summit of the first Corbett, the route I'm on starts to swing round and we leave the mountains behind me there. You can see the sun hitting the, the, the Glen Affric hills there, the white coat, the high mountains. Absolutely beautiful. And we swing around here now. The route, my route's heading along here, but over here, these are the Glen Shiel mountains. Well, they lie between Glen Affric and Glen Shiel, but the majority of them are accessed via Glen Shiel. What a magnificent day it is to view these and the, the clouds coming and going. I was in the mist about five minutes ago and it's burnt off really quickly. Very atmospheric. So it's lovely. And then my route goes up here into the clouds here and uh, then it drops down again. One, one of the things with Corbett's, seeing as I'm doing two today, I know that I'm going to have to drop a long way. It's not like uh, some Monroe's where you, you can bag a lot of them without dropping too much height. There's, there's more of a definition or more of a defined drop that has to be achieved between Corbett's. Um, hence why you can't do that many of them together. But anyway, um, it's lovely. I thought I was going to be in the clag for the rest of the day there, but uh, it's clearing up nicely now and yeah, I'm hot. I might have to change my jacket once again. I think I've had three, cha <laughs> three changes. I've had my doovie jacket on, I've had my soft shell, I've had my hard shell on, so it's just one of those days. But fabulous. Right, let's go. Lovely. A quick change of clothes and I was back down to the soft shell and hiking along the Bielach, ready for the next bit of ascent. But the mountains of Glen Shiel were revealing themselves and providing some stunning views and it certainly put a spring in my step. Cider Monroe, and up here is one of the Glen Affric Monroes. <laughs> Can't remember which one it is, I'll pop up on the screen here. But the route just skirts around the side of it here. It's not the Monroes I'm doing today, it's the Corbett's. So I go along here, skirting the side of the shoulder, past a wee lock, and then it's a big drop down. And then it's the second Corbett of the day. Ah, uh, what's it called? I can't remember. And Shazun. Shazun, perhaps. <laughs> Anyway, that last pool looks quite steep and uh, I'm not looking forward to it. So I'm looking forward to getting to this wee shoulder and just uh, stretching my legs a wee bit on level ground. It kind of helps a wee bit when you've been up, going uphill for a wee while and your legs are sore, which mine are. But it's lovely. Wonderful position. Look at this view. I don't know if you can make it out on the camera, but it is just... It's a fabulous walk. Definitely want to keep for a good day. Right, anyway, enough waffling. Let's get up here a wee bit further. I don't know if you can see. There we go, see if we can get around here so you can see me. So I don't know if you can see this uh, this hill over here is my final hill in the second corbett of this round. But you can also see this shoulder I'm going to be heading down here that drops way down to the Bielach. And it's going to be a steep pull up, I think it'll be two or three hundred metres ascent from the, the bottom of the Bielach. It's going, to be, uh, it's going to be tough. I think if there were two or three of these, I, I think mentally I wouldn't be too bad, but because I know this is going to be the last steep ascent, it's just playing with my mind, and I just know that it's going to be an absolute uh, killer to get up. So. so off I set, dropping down the shoulder towards the Bielach with the final corbett ahead of me, and it always looks steep when you look at these hillsides face on. Anyway, I soon battened down the hatches as another snowstorm came through 
and I slowly trudged up this final corbett in the snow, hoping that it was going to blow through. And blow through it certainly did. As I got onto the summit plateau, the clouds cleared and I started to get some views. I saw the cairn and made a beeline for it. However, when I got there, I also noticed another cairn, a smaller one, and a wind shelter, which mm, possibly looked a bit higher. So I thought I'd better head over to both of these, just to make sure that I'd bagged this one. It had been a long day, and I didn't fancy coming back up. Not sure which one's higher. Seeing as I'd made my way over to the shelter, I thought I'd better make use of it. So I stopped here to get some food inside me and have a wee rest to... You know, my legs were quite sore by this point. And it was a lovely viewpoint as well. It looked back down Glen Affric towards where the car was parked and my descent route. Well, as you saw, there's, there's two cairns here. There's one big one. Then there's a smaller one, which actually looks a little bit higher. And then I noticed this sort of wee wind shelter, which looked, well, probably about the same height as the small cairn. <laughs> so who knows which is the top, but I've visited all three. And this is it now. This is a, this is the last Corbett. And it was a steep pool up there, and it was in the snow. In fact, I can see another snow shower coming in across uh, Glen Affric. So I'm going to enjoy the sunshine. I need to head sort of back a wee bit to the west top before heading back down into the glen and then through the forest. But this is a lovely viewpoint. I can see down uh, Loch Affric, down towards where the car's parked and, and down towards the eastern eastern end of uh, Glen Affric, which is uh, covered in forests and it's, it's just lovely. There's still snow in the hills but the snow level has, has risen a wee bit. They're not as white as they were this morning. And it's been lovely, these, these corbets are fantastic and, and one of the things that I find with, with a lot of corbets, not them all, but with a lot of them, is they give you the best views of the big hills. The, looking at these ones, they, do, they don't look as, impre as impressive as these big Monroes round about, but certainly the views from here over to them is, are absolutely second to none. It's been absolutely fabulous. So, enough, enough uh, waffling on again, I'm going to, um, I've just had something to eat, so I'm going to saddle my bag and get headed back down and then it's a long drive home. It's about three hours from here, three, four hours uh, home and get back to the car, but I think I'll be at least another two, two and a half hours before I get there, so yeah, time to go. So I started my descent back to the car and the underfoot conditions, well, I'm not going to lie, were pretty bad. There was no path down the shoulder and it was really rough, tussocky ground. However, I soon found my way back down and I was headed towards that lovely pine forest. So I'm just coming down the path off the mountain. In fact, I think it's the first path <laughs> I've been on since about 6 o'clock this morning. Anyway, I've just stopped because the view it, that I'm looking at this way is just absolutely astounding. And I know that when I turn the camera around, it's not going to look as good as it does right now in <laughs> these two eyes. But I mean, look at that! It's just absolutely stunning. You see the wee lochins there, and the, 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 this is the ancient uh, Caledonian pine forest, which I'm about to drop back into, which I'm looking forward to walking down a different path through that. And just with the, the lochs and the mountains with the snow on the tops, we've got a blue sky. It's just... It's, I honestly think it's maybe because I'm, I'm tired, I don't know, and it's been a long day, but... That could be the best view I've ever seen. <laughs> I know that's that, that's taken that takes a lot. It's certainly in the top ten views that I have seen. That is just stunning, absolutely stunning. Anyway, over there, that that hill there was the mountain I went up first. That was the very first uh, climb that I went up about um, six or seven hours ago, and. Uh, yeah, here I am on the way back down, and it's been fabulous, absolutely fabulous. It really is. Glen Affric really is a hill walker's paradise. There's so many walks that you can do, low level mountain walking, up in the snow, and, and something in between like I did today, but absolutely above it. And, and these views, I mean, if I, was a photo if I was a photographer, I'd be coming back here and spending a lot more time here. <laughs> but I'm not, so I won't, but I will be back to do more hill walking. Anyway, enough talking. Time to get back down. I think I've got about another hour ahead of me. So I need to get cracked on, back to the car, and then uh, back home. Fabulous. Right, let's go. Although I was absolutely knackered by this point, 
The final part of the walk was through that lovely Caledonian pine wood and it was just fantastic. A lovely, lovely place to walk. So I'd, I'd highly recommend Glen Affric, even if you're not going onto the high tops, it's a lovely place just to wander about the woods. And what a wonderfully beautiful area this is. Is it Scotland's most beautiful glen? Well, I suppose you'll just have to go visit it and find out for yourself.